Hey residents of Meeple Town, today we are summoners. Boof. Boom. And we are summoning our heroes to the field to attack each other in this two player skirmish game of Summoner War 2nd Edition. Okie dokie. Alrighty. What's going on with that voice? Here we are set up for Summoner Wars Second Edition. I'll go ahead and just explain a few things, but really your turns are gonna show what what you're gonna do. But basically, like draws? each of us has a summoner. I'm gonna be playing the the Fallen Kingdom faction, so this is this is my, my whoop, whoop, whoop. Sometimes it's difficult to do that. I don't know why it's <laughs> hard. There, there we go. go. There's my dude right there, <laughs> Rhett Tattis. <laughs> And this one shows that I have 12 health right here. Oh, so many this shows that right I can now. attack so with, with two of mm -hmm. my ranged attack. And then once per turn during my summon phase, I can add two damage to this unit to retrieve an undead unit from my discard pile and place it adjacent to this unit. And then on the back of the card, it shows what the setup is for, for your particular faction. And... Basically what we're trying to do is defeat each other's summoner and we're gonna be summoning out different characters, different units onto the board. We'll have events that will happen and all of it goes through this process right here. And so John's gonna kind of walk you through that. He's the first player, so he has two magic. Two magic. Whoops. <laughs> I'm the second player, I've got three magic and I think we're ready to go. Hey. All right, I think I accidentally hit that when I grabbed some, okay. So, the first thing we're going to do is discard any of our active events. Our events only happen for that round. I don't have any, any active events now. Mine I'll probably set to the side here because the board, I couldn't get it quite on the camera, but Dean will set his up there. Uh, I will play an event this round, so you'll be able to see what that looks like. Then I'm going to be able to summon. Now, all of these cards, as you can kind of see here, if you've never played Summoner Wars at all, um, they cost, here, I'll just pull this up. Like this one cost a, a, goodness gracious, there we go, a certain amount of magic. So I have to play eight magic to get this uh, tree, treeling or whatever you want to, whatever it is, um, into play. Well, I've only got two. And so there's not much that I can do. That, um, so I can, I've got some that I can play that cost two magic. Also could try to save up for someone bigger. Uh, I'm not going to do that at the moment. I am going to summon... A border archer. I've got one right here. I have to summon it adjacent to a gate so I could place the border archer here or here. So I'm going to place it right here. She's going to go right there, which cost me all of my magic. So there, no more summon, no more. Um, no more summon, no more. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> um, so now I get to move and I can move up to three of my units, two spaces each. And these rules can change. Like there's certain yeah. certain ones that can that can go faster. You put um, boost on them. You can go more spaces and stuff. So I'm going to move this one up here, and you'll see why. Because I'm going to attack, and this needs to be adjacent because they're melee attackers. Uh, I'm going to slide this one up here, and I'm going to slide this one up here. Oh, aggression! It's quite the aggressive move there. Well, they aggressive call me Johnny yeah. Aggr Aggression. <laughs> I don't think anyone calls you that, do they? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, if I want to, I can, um, I can, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm going to play my event. And so this event, the chant of growth, if you see it right here, says that I can play this during the move phase, which is what I just did. This actually cost me no magic. This is good for me right off the bat. Target a friendly unit, boost the target and each adjacent friendly unit. So booyah, I'm targeting this lioness. So I just boosted the lioness. Oh boy. I just boosted the archer. He's coming for me. And this I is, just boosted the other archer. bad news. Why do you boost things? Because now this unit has plus one life for each boost it has on it as a maximum of additional five. So instead of having two hearts, this lioness now has three. And I'll, that can max out at seven. And so if I don't be do something big. to stop that. You gotta shut big. those lionesses yeah, down. Shut it down. Yeah. And that's interesting about the game. You'll, you just, the more you play it and know that your opponents armies and whatever they have it you can play a whole lot better yeah. so i so i've done that and then i can build if i have structures to build i don't which i could build like there's additional gates to where i could send uh, summon monster or monsters or people or whatever out of those gates um but i don't have those so the next thing i'll do is attack which is pretty simple and straightforward in this yeah. game i appreciate mm -hmm. I, I like that so this lioness is going to roll three 
um, dice. This undead carrier has three hearts. Every um, sword that I roll is damage, is a hit. So I'm hoping that I roll so three and go ahead and kill that sucker. Because Dean has this, what, race? It's a race, right? Not a, I was going to say faction. It has a yeah. race, this undead race that's annoying as duders. Yeah. That keeps like spawning up and like infecting me if they, you know, all this stuff. So, hey, what does that one do? So, if he kills another guy, then I actually get to replace that destroyed unit with a carry on unit from my discard pile. So, basically, a carrier, not carry on, carry unit. So, basically, when this one's destroyed, I get to immediately raise somebody in that place. But you don't have a discard right kind now. Kind of my MO over here. That's right. I don't have anything. It's not going to help me now, but after he we'll dies see. right here, he'll be able to come back out, hopefully. Three. <laughs> yeah. And just so you know, there's five out of six of the faces of the dice have those swords on it. So that there's was a good, yeah, good chance a really that good was chance gonna happen. happen. Positively for me is because I killed off that monster, I actually gain a magic back. That's right. Now. So, and there's another way to gain magic back, but we haven't gone there yet. So um, I do that one attack. Now I can attack with up to three units the same way I can move up to three units. Mm -hmm. I can attack with this border archer. Um, Yep, because I have two uh, dice here, and I can attack two spaces away. Well, you could take out both my my only characters on the board right off the bat. Yep. Potentially. You yep, I've got to get two, two hits. Nope. Okay, that helps, but it's going to die soon probably. So we'll toss a damage token, and this one, I can't shoot through my lioness to attack his gate. Um, we did not say this was kind of silly of us. The goal of the game is to kill... We said that. Yeah. Did we? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good. I didn't talk about your summoner at all, but I did say okay. that's what we're trying to do. Okay. Mine has a lot to do with like boosting my characters and yeah. stuff like that. Um, and all of the there's six different factions in the box, and they all have different things. We'll we'll kind of talk that about that a little bit later. So I'm gonna do this uh -oh. right now. I can spend one of these boosts. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh no. And so <laughs> I, 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 I almost didn't do it because I didn't want to show the people like, oh man, Dean's got to try to. Come back from. Oh, I'll be, fine. I'll be but fine. But anyways, once per turn, after this unit attacks, you may spend one spe one boost to resolve an extra attack with it. So I can attack again. The only reason I was able to do that was because I had the card that boosted everybody, and I killed him. Yep. So he's gonna get another magic, which is here's the thing with with my faction. I'm gonna lose a lot of guys. I recognize that they're kind of a bunch of softies, but they raise up the undead a lot. But what that means is because John's killing off so many, so many of my guys, he's going to get a lot of magic for that. So and so, the, well, the last part of my kind of phase here is um, I can discard cards from my hand, or a second to last part, it, for one magic each. Now, there was one card I was going to discard that I think I'm not going to now because I gained two magic from killing two people. So I'm actually... Whew. No, I'm going to discard one of them. I can't get these back unless I have a card to be able to go get them back like Dean does. That's I don't, right. th this race I don't think has it. So that card that I discarded is is gone. So that's kind of the difficult pool in this game. Yeah. One of the difficult mm -hmm. pools, right? All right. So I'm uh Oh, gonna, I accidentally saw your hand and okay. I know what you got coming. I'm drawing I'm drawing up <laughs> to five to end my turn. All right. Also normally you're sitting across from the table from each other, that wouldn't happen, but uh I gotta do something here quickly. Like John said, you start your turn off by discarding all of your active events. You don't have any to start off the game. So now I'm going to summon. I'm going to summon two characters out there. You're worried about my rhinoceros, aren't you? You hate my rhinoceros. I'm not, I'm not worried about anything. I'm not scared. Every time I pull, like, I can put out other ones, but when I pull out a rhinoceros, you're like, ah. <laughs> what I don't want to happen, though, is I, I'm going to have to do something about that lioness. Yeah. Because that lioness attacks with three, which is basically... With my against my faction, you're just gonna be knocking them out like crazy. So I need to before before she gets too strong, I need to do something about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put out. Mm, I don't love these though. I'm gonna put out my undead archer over here. And again, I think John mentioned this, but when you summon characters, they're summoning next to gates. Um, Yep, so I'm gonna put that. That's gonna cost me two magic. You're gonna put it right in front. You got another one, huh? I've got another one, the Hellfire Cultist. And I'll go ahead and show you this one. I've, the Undead Archer, I didn't, I think I did not mention this one either, but this one is going to attack with three ranged. 
It also has two health cost two magic, but then if I take somebody out with this unit, I get to replace that unit with this one. So I get to just like basically teleport into that spot. I'm also gonna pull out my Hellfire Cultist, which is free, and basically, just this look at, like, I think the trick is to just look at the camera right? instead of focusing on the... Oh, you're probably right about that. Yeah, well, I stink it up. <laughs> so anyway, when I when I have this one out there, so after this one is destroyed, and it will be destroyed, then I, I get to add one damage to each enemy that the unit is adjacent to. And so, if this one is destroyed this next time, it'll damage that. Probably not anything else. You really want this one to be surrounded so it takes out a lot of other people. All right, did the summoning phase. Now I'm looking at the move phase and I will go ahead and bump this one up here because I'm going to try my hardest to take that lioness out. Although that being said, that border archer is a beast too because of the multiple attacks that they get to do and four health. But she doesn't have any boost at the moment. That's true. That's true. Although that might change. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and moved, um, again, three of your units up to two spaces, and then I can build, and I will build a gate. This will help me to put out summon units in other locations, and when this goes out, you can put it anywhere on the back three rows or somewhere adjacent to your summoner. So if my summoner's you know, somewhere else, then I could have put that there, but I will put it here. This will give me some options of summoning things over here. I get to do that one for free. That's part of the build action. And now I'm going to attack. I will attack with the, oh, I should have thought this through. I'm gonna attack with that Hellfire Cultist first. first. Yeah, that's what I would do. Cause then you could shoot my Border Archer down. That's all right. So just one arrow, I hit one. I'm gonna have to get two more out of my next attack. So the Undead Archer is going to attack with three. What if you didn't take it down? Two. There we go. Got it. And Which, I really needed that because I need the magic later. For a second, I, I was a little bit. Because at first I didn't think you got it. Did you? <laughs> no, I did not. All right. So I do get a magic for that, and I can move that into that spot. Part of me is a little nervous to do that, but uh, yep. Yeah, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave my character where I am. You'll. John still could potentially attack with both if he wants to. But we'll see what happens. Then I can discard to get some magic, and I do think I will do that. I'm going to discard one to get one magic, and then I'm going to draw back up to five, so I'm drawing four cards. Now, what could happen in this game, and probably will happen in this game for me, is if we were to play through the whole thing, which we're not going to play through the whole game today, if you run out of your deck, it's not like you get to reshuffle your discard in here. You actually just get to, you have to keep playing out with whatever you have, and so what I don't want to do is just spend all of my cards to gain magic. And that is my turn. Great. All right, so back to my turn. Um, if I had an event, which I had an event, I just didn't have it on camera. Uh, that's the point. I discard it. So I think I am going to summon a... Um, I think I'm going to summon this Spirit Mage right here, which is only going to cost me one. And I think... Oh, yeah, let's just do it. I mean, go big or go home, it's time to go, right? That's true. I'm gonna go ahead and summon my Rhinoceros here. Yeah, mm, yeah, okay. That's, that is bad news for this guy. Maybe not right now, but it will be. Yeah, all so right. I'll show you in a little bit why. So now that I'm gonna move, this is where it gets tricky for me a little bit. Um, Hmm. Okay. I think I'm just going to move my border archer up here a spot. So that's one of my units. Um, man, this is where it gets really interesting on my decisions. By the way, after I summon this unit, I'm supposed to put a boost on it. I forgot that. So my spirit mage has one boost. Um... I'm going to go ahead and... So the thing about the rhinoceros... Sorry, I'm taking a second to think. But the thing about the rhinoceros that's interesting is um, I actually do a damage if I run over people. Right? So the rhinoceros actually does this. So when this unit moves, it may you move one extra space for each boost it has on it. So right now, it's not that powerful. I can only move two spaces, but I can get a boost on it. I'm just going to move this one space, two spaces here. Um... If I had a boost on it, then I could, you know, trample easily some of these folks and stuff. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do now is after the spirit, and I should have done it earlier, I guess. 
I should have done earlier, but it doesn't matter. It won't affect it. Is after the spirit, uh, after this unit moves, either boost it so I can boost this unit right now, or I can spend my boost to boost a friendly unit within three spaces. So what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and because it's within three spaces, go ahead and boost my rhinoceros um, and just really hope to kill this guy to where hopefully my rhinoceros is strong and he can't do damage to it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see what happens. First thing I'll do is use my rhinoceros because if I can kill it with this, which which is a good shot, he's only a two health. So. Yeah, but I have to roll them both. It's very possible he won't. Man, I'm rolling fantastic. Yeah, today. but again, like we mentioned earlier, it's five out of six chances that that's going to happen. So yeah. that's so that, why melee is pretty powerful. What's so good about that for me is that um, I should have moved. No, I already I moved three units, so never mind. I couldn't do that. Uh, it is the the good thing that it, that it does for me is now I can spend I can attack with this border archer, and I just did two damage and killed him. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Now what happens is when this one is destroyed, you're going to take a damage for that. So that's you know kind of an okay thing. I I'm saying that like to stay optimistic because I'm just getting whipped over here. But again, that's ex that's expected from who my characters are. So. I'm gonna, now nah, I'm gonna pause. I could remain really aggressive, remove this boost and attack his gate here mm -hmm. to try to do a little bit of damage, but I think I would rather have it. I don't, well, I'm going to. I'm worried he'll kill this border archer off because I'm only I'm down to three health and then I'll have wasted this. So you know what? Let's just take a shot at it at okay. now anyways. Two damage. Yeah, I think that's not if a bad thing. I roll perfectly in this game, that's ridiculous. <laughs> No, those gates are hard to destroy, but if you can do it, it's a good thing because then yeah. it becomes harder to to get your people out. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. And then after I do, um, I should have done this before. Do you care if I do this? No, you're fine. Town, you're fine. don't get upset. This is how Dean and I play. I forgot I, I got this backwards. I needed to build a structure, and um, I won't do anything. Nothing, else, nothing changed that would be any different, so I'm going to put the gate out there. There we go. Okay. And I'm not going to discard any cards at the moment, so I only have two magic for next round. That's right. And nothing changes because the gate has to go out after you summon, so it's not like you can summon units from that anyway. No. All right. I think what I'm going to do, I don't have any events, so I'm going to start off with my summoning. Um, during the summoning phase with my character, and I, I feel like I really need to do this because i got to get units out on the board, I can take two damage to put an undead unit from my discard pile out onto the board adjacent to that. And so what I'm going to do, uh, I don't really love all the ones that I have in my discard pile, but I'm gonna put this one out there. Okay, and that's my Undead Archer that um, that I had out there earlier, obviously, that, that just got taken out. I just gotta get stuff out there, like I said. So I'm going to, for my next action my next summon i'm going to put out the another hellfire cultist right that's tough i'm going to put it here again so hopefully that can add a little bit more damage there and then for my next trick i will put out a oh boy that's not great either I think I'm gonna put out an undead. I think I'm gonna put out an undead warrior. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'll put out an undead carrier. This one is just gonna cost me one magic. And I'm hoping that I'll at least be able to take out one character so I can start building up some magic so I can get some better characters out there. So that, that'll be all of my summoning and then I'll move, I'm gonna leave that character there. I will move this one up one. I'll just go ahead and put it in two spaces, I think. Doesn't really matter, we can both reach each other because we're ranged. Yeah, but I couldn't if you were back here though, right? Yeah, you can, because we're both ranged oh, I'm three, sorry. so My yeah. Um, and then one, two. Now that makes me a little bit nervous to do that, but I have to be able to start attacking and getting some magic. So first thing I'm going to do is attack with the Let's see, I'll attack with the cultist. That's gonna be two arrows right here. Oops, I'm probably off the board. Oh, no, look at no, that, you're fine. swing and a miss. Are Ooh, you kidding me? That was bad. 
I'm going to now attack with the carrier. That was really bad. I only needed to hit with one, hoping that I could attack, hit with two there. So I hit you two there, but still not dead. That was not what I wanted. Hey, we need to, even though we're not going to play through this whole game, we need to finish this one. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> this one would be a little you bit... beat me uh, yesterday. That's right. Uh, and then I will attack with my undead archer. That's going to be three rolls on that one. I cannot kill that one either, but at least I can do some damage. Oh, that's better. Two Roll. damage on there. Uh, part of that was my fault. I probably should have boosted my stuff with some cards that I have in my hand, but I didn't. And so that's going to be the attack phase, and then I will decide if I want to keep any of these. Mm, man, this is a tough one. I think... I'll just go ahead and show you what I'm going to do. I've got a champion sitting in my hand that cost six to summon. I think I just need to get a bunch of units out there. So I'm going to discard this one to give myself some magic and then draw up to three. You are the champion. That was bad that I couldn't take anyone out to get any magic. That was that was really bad. You want to end it right there? Two full rounds? I do, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> Hey, we've been playing for 20 minutes. So Yeah, and I think that gives you a good idea of the, of the play. I now, think so. It, it doesn't give you a good idea of all the characters and how they play out, but uh, just know that you have a lot of those... The common units, you're going to have several different, like I have a lot of the Undead Archers and my Undead Carrier, Undead Warrior, and then you have those champions, you only have one of each of those different types of champions. So let's, do you mind events. if I pull out, Dean, yeah. uh, the other races so that you can just briefly show how many are in the box and stuff yeah. in the set? Yeah, so we'll just show these off and kind of leave you, there's, you know, you can you can explore these on your own, but just show you what they are. We got the, the Vanguards here, we got the... Oh, you're pulling them out of the bags? I am. I just show, okay. I think maybe you know show them a couple cards. They can't uh, see it we got the breakers. Distance. Okay. Oh, you want to pull them out and actually? Well, I, mean, I just want to. I just want to. Just I just want to show a few. Like, all right. So, here we go. We got the dwarves right here. I didn't even do my own rule about that. Just a couple. <laughs> just a few cards. Okay. All right. So with the with it here, I'm gonna throw up some vanguards there. You're the one who always does a good job of like putting it on that I know, overhead that's, camera. That's, um, these are the citadels. You got the different um, the different characters for these. Kind of show you those, just like John said, without kind of going into too much depth. Yep. I'll go ahead and say my favorite faction that I played with was Cave the, Goblins, the Fallen Kingdom one that I played with today. Even though I think I, <laughs> it always makes me nervous because I lose so many units because they're just like getting popped off all over the place. That's um, what happens. So there are. Let's just. Six in the box. Six, okay. That's yeah, right. six in the box. Um, obviously, we just played with the the two. We played with the Fallen Kingdom and the um, I forget what yours. The Savannah yeah. Elves is that what they are? Um, we got the the Breakers here. That's the here we go. That's the Summoner right there. Show off some of the. I'm not showing off a lot of the. Um, I'm not showing off a lot of the champion units because I think part of it is helpful just to kind of see what those what those common units are. I think yep. I just pulled that one up there. Yeah, just a couple of those. There you go. But I like how they all play out very differently. Mm -hmm. And and it's, yeah. it's I think that one of the things, uh, I'll get into that later, but one of the things is just kind of exploring those is kind of the the beauty of this game, I think. But let's go ahead and talk about the art and components, Sean. Okay, let's do it. What do you think? What do you think, Dean? Especially for... Dean owns the original. I do, yeah. And yeah. Um, I have never played the original version. I've only seen some pictures of it. So, in fact, while you're sharing it, let me pull some back up and I'll do a little little uh, comparison. Okay. What do you think All compared right. to it, to the other version? Um, I think one of the things is the, uh, the biggest thing. Now, okay, just know that it's been a while since I've played this game. And this game reminded me how much I actually really liked it. But one of the big things is the dice. Um, in the original version, you had dice with pips on it to show you when you hit, like hitting over a certain number. I think it was three or something like that. But with this one, it makes it very clear. Like if you were attacking with the with a melee character hitting on swords, if you're attacking with a ranged character hitting on the arrows, and then you have these other, I don't know if we really showed that very much, but those squiggly lines, that didn't, uh, one of the ones I, I, I showed in there earlier, the, uh, uh, what are they, I forget they are, the vanguards. So the vanguards use a decent amount more of those symbols on there. Now I have some cards in my deck that will allow me to benefit from rolling those squiggly dice, but it's just kind of like a, a special ability from rolling those symbols. So that's a big deal. This the layout for the card is 
is different and I like it better on this. Like for example, on the on the original you had these dots that they were that were there to show you what your health was. This one it actually just lays it out there. Yeah. The symbols on there, whether or not it's ranged or it's melee. I, I think that's it's just clear and then the artwork overall I I like better I think from this it's version. It's a little more cartoonish. Version. It is. You know. Yeah, it is. And I and I think some people won't like that, actually. No, I think some people will really not like that. Yeah, and I didn't dislike the art at all. I thought the art for the original was really well done. Yeah, it was. It's fine. But I like. But I do like this. I think it. I don't know. Just kind of feels right for this style of game. Maybe it feels comic booky to me. Yeah, I like it. Um, yeah, I like it. That's it. Yeah. No, I mean, like, I'm looking at the art and like, I'm. It's it's that 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 kind of comic kind of you know cartoony style and. That's not always my jam, to be real. Like, yeah. You know that in, in a lot of games. Like so, I I like it. It's it's um it's good. Yeah. That I mean, it's for that. If you want to go that style, it's fantastic. That style is absolutely great. Yeah. But I could see how some people might be like, uh, this looking like it's a children's game or right. something like that compared to what I used to play. Um, I wouldn't feel like that. But yeah. Anyway, and everything else is everything's really clearly laid out. I don't know if you pointed out, but I love how I did not. This is I excellent. love how this is written on the board here yep. for someone that has recently learned this game. That is ridiculously helpful. And you can teach this game in no time because of this. I mean, there's a few other rules yeah. that you need to teach with the movement and with the with the range attacks and things like that, and like you know how to summon and all that. But but most of it you can just look on here and it's it's there, and you can just jump into the game. Yeah. The time that it takes comes from reading the cards and know what your different factions do. I will say one uh, negative, and maybe this can be fixed. I have no idea what the plans are. Same thing for the original Summoner Wars. You've got this hard board, <laughs> but you have these cards that you're trying to pick up, and so there's two negatives with this. One, sometimes you pick down cards and they kind of like you know spin around. Obviously not like that, but you know, I might put a card down here and then I pull my hand away and it's, you know, goes sideways or something like that. I would like to see a play mat for this, but I don't, I don't, I don't expect that in the box. I just think it would be nice if somewhere down the road, you'd want to pick it up. and I don't think that that's available yet, but I think somewhere down the road, that would be nice. Sleeving it makes it a little bit easier to pick up the cards, but if you don't sleeve it, then it makes it a little bit, a little bit more of a challenge. Whoa. Hear that? Meeple Town? Biker, biker outside. How about that? So right. is the game fun? Go for it. Gameplay. Okay, so this will be from the perspective of someone who's never played um, Summoner Wars. Um, now, off camera, you pushed me off the camera over here. Did I? No, you didn't. I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, it's fun. So this is, caveat, this is not super my style game, yeah. right? Like, I'm definitely more of a dry Euro guy, if you want to say that, and those are my jams. Um, but this is a fun game. So what I like about it, Dean mentioned earlier how easy people can get into the game. Like it is, it seem, it's definitely a game I feel like, now strategically, it takes some time I think to like, kind of learn what to do. But I'll say this, the very first time I played this game, with the very first faction, I didn't take long for me to pretty much understand what's going on because when you, if you've never played this before, the deck isn't full of a ton of different types of cards. Right, like there are, you're seeing this a lot of the same ones come out now. There's plenty of different. I mean, I feel like it's almost a perfect balance. Yeah, I really do of having some of the ones that are similar, but also not having it too similar to where it doesn't feel like you have different things coming out. Yeah, you can kind of predict what might show up if you draw three cards. Like, okay, I haven't seen a lioness in a while. There's a good chance maybe that that shows up at this point. So I really do feel like it's almost a perfect balance mm -hmm. of having X amount of those types of cards, which really helps people learning a game um, pick up a whole lot faster. Yeah. When you say, what do you think about that? Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I think it just, it is a game where you can just like pick it up right away. Um, yeah. I, I think for me that one of the big highlights for this game, I do like this style of game. I like, I like these skirmish type games and kind of battling it out. And, you know, especially a game like this where you, you, you kind of need to, okay, I'm not an expert at this game, but I feel like you need to be aggressive. It's not like I can just sit back and turtle because I need to gain magic from attacking John's guys. And it's not the end of the world if you do lose characters because, you know, that kind of balances out. Well, yeah. it should, although I haven't, I don't think, taken yeah, out Hey, you're going to lose characters in this. <laughs> you are, and I like that. I like that it encourages that, that attack. I like that it's, uh, that there's a lots of exploration. You know, I, I mentioned that what my character does is 
is I, I'm okay with dying. And in fact, sometimes I want to take out some of my characters so that I can put other things out onto the board. John's going to be boosting his a lot more than what I will be doing. Some characters will allow you to heal more. Like there's lots of different yeah. f ways of playing these characters. And I think you do well when you play into the strengths of those different factions. Sure. And I like that. I think it's well done. And I also think that with the time between the first and second, there's a lot of, a lot of that, that, I don't know if balance is the right word, but balance and like perfecting these cards for these different factions, I think really shows. I think it just like, uh, I, I just think it's really well done. Yeah, I like how the summoners are all really different the way they play in addition to, you know, um, the races or the factions or whatever. Because it, it gives you a different puzzle, a different challenge to, you know, every time. And having six in the box... That's a lot. The reason I brought that up was like that's a lot of replayability. Yeah, like yeah. learning all those. But not only are you learning them, you're also competing against different ones too. So how does you know the Savannah Elves compete against you know the Cave Goblins or whatever? You know what yeah. I mean? Like uh -huh. like what different strategies can I explore them? What do I need to be careful about because I'm competing competing against them? I think that that's that that's that that's really good. Um, yeah, there may be for newer players like uh, one challenge or one hurdle would be like there is some text on the cards mm -hmm. and having a lot of you know having five cards in your hand and the first time i play i'm like wow okay there's a lot to think about i've never seen these cards but it doesn't take long i think you're halfway through and you kind of know what they do yeah um yeah. but yeah so there is definitely text and like okay yeah but if i boost this then i can do that but it's i feel like it's simple enough it like, is it's just basically a boost boost yeah. can change things yeah and what it what it does in general like the play time in the box, I think it was 40 to 60 minutes is what it says on there. I think your first time playing with each of the different factions might take on the longer end of that, maybe even beyond sure. an hour. But I think overall, once you kind of understand what they do, you don't need to read the text on that as much. and You can just jump into it and play in, in 40 minutes. You know, I, I think the, the negative is that when you're playing those initial games, there's going to be some downtime because if I'm sitting here reading all these characters and then seeing how they fit in onto the board with the characters I have out there, Definitely. John might just be sitting there because he doesn't care what I'm doing until I actually do it. So that could be a negative, but I think that it just takes more time, more place for that to kind of work the kinks out there. Yeah, I would say along those lines, my my biggest negative, if I'll say any negatives to the game, because there's a lot of positives, this is a fun game, um, is the fact that there are, you know, there's six phases here, and some of them are lickety split. Draw two cards, right, yeah. ready to go. But there is definitely, even if you know the, uh, the cards pretty well, there's definitely going to be some downtime. Because yeah. Dean's going to have five cards, and which one does he want to put out? Um, which one does he want to summon based on how much magic does he have? And so you're like, uh, um, I don't know. And again, this is also a positive. Is like, I love those, like, this pool. I really want to do this, but I really want to do this. Yeah. And how do I yeah. figure that out? But you got that. Then you have to make the, you know, you have to strategically figure out what's the best way to move my characters. And if you move them, then, like, this one, it can set things off. Or the spirit mage, it, it, it boosts this unit after you move it. So you got that. If you have a gate, you know, where or a structure, where am I going to build that? Okay, now that I have these, which do I want to discard and not discard? It, the turns don't just go like this. Sure. They're just, they don't. Yeah. And so I get sometimes a little like, ah, all right. They do get faster the more you play, for sure. When I'm doing my turn, I'm having a blast. And then when I watch, sometimes on other people's turns, I'm kind of like, all right, let's go. I'm ready to go. John's got no patience. I'm fired up. This isn't a game problem. This is a John problem. We yeah. can talk about that. I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. It's not yeah, like no, it's not I, like I, I totally, place a worker and do something quick and move on. It's, I totally get it. There's definitely a decent amount going on. But I am engaged in what he's doing. Yeah. I'm not engaged when he's just looking through his cards and trying to figure out what to do, but yeah. I'm like, okay, now he's positioned that. So I like that. So and that's, I, I that's not a huge huge complaint, but it is something that I'm I don't I don't, I don't love sure. a lot of downtime in games. Ideally, you're kind of looking through the cards that you have to figure out what you're going to do on the next turn. The, the issue with that, some of that's going to change, right? So John's attack is going to happen in the fourth stage. And so it, really, I can't fully determine what I'm going to do until, until John, does until you yeah. do that. Um, and at that point, it's already pretty much my turn anyway. But I, I do think that that downtime doesn't have to be as big of a deal if you're working on figuring out what you're going to do for what your you're going to do that's a great yeah. that's a great agree i agree with that what i'm saying <laughs> uh, but i will say sorry i want to reiterate i don't mind downtime in games i don't love it in two-player games because i'm a social butterfly yeah <laughs> sure yeah so if we're playing with like three or four people and there's some downtime in between turns i can talk to these people over here and we can talk yeah but when you're playing one-on-one -on -one and there's some downtime 
I'm, I know Dean's probably like, shut up, John. Shut, <laughs> shut your mouth. Because <laughs> I'm trying to have this conversation where he's trying to figure out what he's doing. Um, anyways, but besides that, I, I, people, I'm going to go with my final thoughts. Yeah, that's People fine. love this game. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Obviously, there's a second edition. It's like a lifestyle <laughs> game for people, right? Some like, And I totally understand why. It has done extremely well. Um, the way the cards move and you attack each other and the simplicity and yet... There is the, those tough decisions that you have to make. Which cards am I keeping? Where am I going to move my people? Um, a game that you can pick up with a lot of different people. Wow, it's a it's a super well designed game. It is. Yeah. I when I came into it, like I, I wanted to play it. I mean, do you know, like I, we do need to get this because I've always wanted to play it. Yeah. But it's like one of those things where I've always wanted to play it, but not that much to where I've played it. So I was excited about it, and but I, I was kind of expecting to not like it mm -hmm. that much, like because it's just not my style. And I'm not like over the moon about the game because stylistically, but I think it's super well done. Um, well, this is a hard decision to pick on what my <laughs> what I, what I want this to be. Uh, I, this is where John gruels so. over half of a point. Um, <laughs> am I usually willing to play, which is a seven out of ten? Yes. I am. Am I going to recommend it, which is an 8 out of 10? Probably not, unless I know someone really likes those style of games, then I would ab absolutely recommend it. Yeah. I'm going to say a solid 7. That's where I'm going to be, like a solid 7 out of 10. I, I like it. I'm usually willing to play it. Um, I'm probably not going to go pick it up again, and it's purely style. It'll be the same way as if you love these types of games, and I bring out Dry Euro X game. You're going to be like, "Well, that's a well-designed game," but I'm not going to pick it. Yeah. That's, I just want you to know if you've never watched our channel, that's kind of the perspective. But if Dean wants to play it, I will play this <clears> game because <throat> it is fun, and I did enjoy it. Yeah, uh, I love this game. I yeah. think it's I think it's fantastic. It is more my style. Uh, <laughs> This is weird because I feel like I've been giving a lot of really high scores this year, but honestly, we did that last year we've too. just we've just been playing a lot of games that we really like. And at the end of the last year, like we're just finding a lot of games, or I'm finding a lot of games that I really like over the past yeah. like six or eight months, something like that. Um, but this is one that I already knew that I liked, right? I own this game. I've got plays of it, and and I think it just kind of goes with your style. Here's the thing: I think if you if you like skirmish type games. It's good. I think you're really going to like this. Yeah. Now, you might think, okay, I need miniatures. This game does not have miniatures. It has cards instead, and you might think that's a negative for you. Not for me. Yeah, yeah. And I and I think if you give it a chance... Because all the stuff's written on there so well. I love that. I love yeah. that it's written on there. And I, I think if you give that... A, if you can get past that miniature piece and look to the actual game, I think you might really like this if you like that style of game. Again, which I do. I'm going to... You may make it a major piece. Yeah, but Dean is trying to convince you to make it a miniature piece. There we go. Something like that. <laughs> I'm going to convince you to get this game if you like anything about it. I it's, agree. I 100% agree with it's you. It's an excellent game. Maybe you know one of my favorite in the genre for sure. I'm going to give this one. You might not think I'm going to give it this high, John. 9 out of 10? A 9 out of 10. Yeah. yeah, I'm giving this a 9 out of 10, which is my highest score I've given it in a, in a long time. This is an excellent game. Yep. I love it. I love so many pieces about this game. It's just... Right up my alley. And here's the thing. If you're thinking, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this game. Go to PlaidHatGames.com. I hope that's the, the website. I think that's right. PlaidHatGames.com. And you can actually play this online to see if this is something that you like anyway, which I love that. I love that you can just go yeah. on there and play a couple of the factions. You can pay to get more factions, but if, if I remember right, I think you can go on there just to test two of them out. Don't quote me on that. Maybe I should put a link in the description to let <laughs> you know. But... Find out if this is a game for you because, again, if, you, if you're like John, this isn't your style of game. I, this isn't going to change your mind. No, Maybe. it's not my style of game. And if I could see myself picking it up if I had friends besides you that I play with regularly that would play this game. Yeah. I just don't. Yeah, sure. Uh, you're, the, you're the one and you own it. My wife would hate this game. This is just she doesn't like attacking and killing each other and stuff like that. Um, and a big problem for me is I don't have a lot of people that will play this with yeah. me. Wah, wah. It's just not our the gaming groups that we have. Just yeah. we just tend to lean 
towards certain styles and this is not necessarily one that's of them. exactly right now if i had more people this very well could rise up because i would probably get yep. a lot more plays out of it anyway as it is that's a nine for me i love 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 this game that is a, a seven, strong seven seven from john strong seven tell people how they can get in touch with us all right if you're enjoying our channel we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel if you'd like to support what we're doing go to patreon.com slash meeple town or at meeple town games on facebook instagram and twitter and we're bored game geek guild 3407 thanks for coming down to meeple town thanks for joining us and thanks to our patreon supporters for making content like this possible. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com slash meepletown. To follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, find us at Meepletown Games. Finally, to connect with us and other residents of Meepletown, you can join Guild 3407 at boardgamegeek.com. Until next time, thanks for coming down to Meepletown. <laughs>